I'm going to explain why no one likes you and it may be because of one of their mannerisms and habits that I'm going to speak about in the video. So there's two main reasons why you're not likable and that no one wants to be around you. The first reason is that you have extreme neediness and the second reason is that you lack respect for people. Now the reason why you should trust me in this case and the reason why I'm talking about this, I'm going to explain my own story. Personally, I suffered mostly from the first reason, which was extreme neediness. Now, what happened was in the past, I used to be so needy, so scared of what people would think of me, so hooked on to external validation that I couldn't speak at all. I was pretty much a mute. No one heard my voice ever. And this pretty much carried on later on, early high school. I would just not able to hold any eye contact. I couldn't make friends really, I couldn't speak to people, I couldn't do presentations well, or at all really. I do really poor on those, and I knew a change had to be made, but I just really couldn't get that feeling out of my head. I had no confidence, and I was really needy. That was the main problem, to be honest, with my whole, just lack of social skills. But I've come a long way since then, and I'm explaining pretty much some things and some habits to avoid that are really needy and how to just get out of that trap. And also in the sense of being unlikable, the lack of respect, having an ego that's way too big, I'm gonna explain some habits that are really annoying and that reduce your charisma because people don't wanna be around you when you have those negative vibes that are circling you. So part one, extreme neediness. The first part I'm gonna cover 1.1 is external validation. So this is when you put the opinions of others over your own opinions. For example, you take the way other people see you as like in higher regard than the way you see yourself, which is really the wrong way to go about it. You should be caring more about how you think about your own self than how the, all the people around you think about you, unless they're all really close family, friends. Even then, you should care about your own opinion more. You should know deep within yourself that you're working hard to achieve what you want to achieve, that you're being the best person you can, and that you're impacting the world in some kind of way. You just really, it's all about confidence, really self-confidence, self-esteem, really just understanding that your own opinion is more important and, and it's the most important to be honest. Later on in the video, I'm gonna talk about ego. And of course, when you have self-confidence, sometimes ego can come and this also will cause some problems in your social life, social skills. All of that the next thing is when you're always acting nice with the wrong intentions so you might think that you're being really nice to everyone you don't want to have a disagreement you don't want to start an argument you don't want people to feel I don't know people to feel uncomfortable whatever around you and this is usually done if you're always acting nice you're never disagreeing with anyone you're never challenging people's points you're never saying something that needs to be said for example if a teacher gets something wrong you're not asking about it you're just sitting there not able to put your hand up too scared you're sitting there not able to speak up for yourself not able to speak up for others just really acting nice when you don't really want to always be acting nice even if you disagree with something you fake it and act like you agree in that oh it's the perfect idea i used to always be like this you're pretty much a pushover and your niceness is not coming from a place of kindness. It's really coming from a place of just wanting that external validation, wanting people to like you. It's honestly more of a selfish desire. It's not, I aren't actually trying to help people if you're coming with niceness from a needy perspective. So it's really important to understand that if you're acting overly nice, it's because you're too scared to disagree. You're too scared about how others think about you. Now, the third thing is feeling like no one likes you for who you are. If you really feel this way, it's probably true to be honest. Um, this is, sounds really messed up and mean, but the reason why you're thinking like this is because you don't even like yourself. So how can you expect others to like who you are as a person? So to combat this, what I'd highly recommend is just really focusing on improving yourself, taking action, taking steps to make yourself better, go to the gym, start running, doing exercise, start journaling, start gratitude journaling, meditation, anything like that, focusing on your studies, 
working hard, working, just really improve yourself in multiple ways. Stop being so, I don't know, complacent. Stop, get off those video games, just all of that. If you can make progress in improving yourself, you really will not have this problem. Because at the end of the day, people will like you for who you truly are if you show your true colors, unless you're some kind of egotistical maniac that no one likes to be around, but that's very unlikely. To be honest, if you're watching this, you're definitely not one. So there are people out there who like you for who you are. If it's if that's not the case so far, it's either, it's two things, either you're in the wrong environment or that is true and it's because you haven't put in any effort into yourself, into actually improving yourself as a person. So the next part I'm gonna cover is nervousness and body language. So that's 1.2. Now, a lot of people, when they talk to people, this was me especially back then, just seem really nervous. They stutter over their words. They sound weak when they speak. They don't talk down. So I'll, I'll talk about that right now, actually. So talking down is basically at the end of your sentence, you want to just finish it on a lower pitch. See how I just did that there, right? I'm not, at, I'm not, so for example, I'm making a statement. I like dogs more than cats. See how I ended up there? It doesn't sound strong. It doesn't sound powerful. It doesn't sound like I actually have authority and just like I'm sure in what I'm saying. But if I say, I like dogs more than cats, it sounds a lot more powerful. It sounds like I actually know what I'm talking about and I'm firm in my belief. Obviously, that's not really a true statement. I like them both, but <laughs> that was just an example of talking down. So this is a great way to sound less nervous when you speak. Another great way is to try to remove as many filler words as possible. I'm still working on that, of course. I used to struggle specifically a lot with the word like. You'll see me using this in these videos occasionally a lot less than I would have back then. I would literally stutter with the word like, uh, like, like, like. It was really bad and I was, because I was nervous talking to people, I wasn't sure in myself. And I haven't, at that time, I hadn't put in the effort to just really improve myself, myself, improve my speech, to really try to cut out as many of these filler words as possible. I also spoke with a weak voice, as I mentioned earlier about down talking. If you can, try to speak in a strong, confident voice, sound like you know what you're talking about, and you actually have judgment and have firm ideas. So one way you can do this is by journaling about topics, by thinking about experiences, analyzing your day. <clears throat> if you can do things like this, you'll have a lot more, a lot more clarity in your ideas, and you'll be able to speak about things a lot more, with a lot more judgment and a lot more firmness the next thing is p really poor body language and eye contact so i used to really struggle with this especially during covid i'd with a mask i'd always be touching my mask i would be hunched down when i'd walk through the hallways instead of if when there was no one around instead of just walking through the middle i'd always be walking on the side with my head down you know bad posture i had really poor body language when i was speaking to people as well i couldn't make eye contact i couldn't face them when i'd sit i wouldn't be able to just like sit and relax, you know. I would always be like, just straight up like this, legs really close together, just really like a, I don't know. I'm, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's just really poor body language. I'll explain later how I solved this problem with my body language and how I worked on it. A big part of it, of course, this is not the main, the main way. The main way I'll explain later in the action plan. But one way, one great way actually, just building some muscle, building a better physique, because your walk naturally changes when you have more muscle on it, when you're not so skinny and frail, or you're not maybe super overweight. I think just having like a wider frame, well, not wider frame, but like bigger shoulders, bigger traps, and like bigger back, everything makes you walk a certain kind of way that if you really don't have any of these muscles, like newfound muscles, no development, you really won't have this kind of walk. It just comes, just trust me here, it's also, of course, from an increase in confidence because of the fact that you're stronger now, you have a better physique, all of that, it comes with it. Um, also, not speaking clearly, that's a big part of nervousness and body language that really needs to be touched on. I already mentioned earlier, it's not, you shouldn't be talking really soft, like no one can hear you. Because people want to hear things, they don't want to be, they don't want to have to just try to like lean their ear in always and try to hear things out when you don't even have firmness and judgment in what you're saying. 
So I'm gonna go back onto eye contact. Personally, this was a huge struggle for me and this took so much work, honestly, like over a year of just constant practice. But how I did this, so in the past, people would always comment how I would never look them in the eyes. Even when my social skills started improving for a bit, I still really struggle with this. I get really uncomfortable. After like a second, I would instantly break. I just feel so uncomfortable, especially with teachers and everything of that sort. Now, how I fixed this was I was reading this book called How to Talk to Anyone by Leo Lowndes. This was an amazing book. This changed the game for me. I'm so grateful I read this book. But there was one chapter that talked about this technique called sticky eyes. The premise of it basically is you imagine that there's sticky taffy between your eyes and the other person in the conversation's eyes. When they're speaking and when you're speaking, you don't break that. You don't break the taffy. It still stays between. It stretches and stuff with your eyes. And of course it's gonna feel uncomfortable, but the taffy's still there between your eyes, so you have to stay locked on. And when you're finally gonna break the eye contact, you wanna do it almost slowly, reluctantly, not like a quick glance down. Make sure it's not like down, make sure it's to the side or up or something like that. Obvious, I mean, of course the best probably, in my opinion, is the side. But you don't wanna be doing it just like, you know, really quickly and nervously. You wanna be doing it with confidence, just. I don't know how to describe it, but I'd highly recommend for you to try this. Just imagine there's a sticky taffy and just lock, hold that eye contact, even though it'll feel really uncomfortable, even though you'll feel like they're staring into your soul. Even if you feel like just so uncomfortable with it. Believe me, I was not that guy. I could not hold any eye contact at all. So that's a great way to do it. Another great way is when you're watching videos like this, just hold eye contact with me really strong. Don't break it at all. And what you'll find is that you'll start doing this when, if you're still in school, when the teacher's speaking, you'll be holding their eye contact fully. That's one thing also another great way to improve it. They won't always be looking at you, but if you just really give them your attention and just really focus in on their eye contact, like let's say they're up there. For example, do it with my eyes right now. So like, let's say I'm giving a lecture. I pretty much am. I'm talking to you about this topic. Just look at me deep in the eyes and don't break it. Even when I break the eye contact, of course, this is not a great habit for when you're actually talking to normal people, but it'll get you a lot more comfortable with just holding eye contact and being used to looking an eye into the eyes straight up when I'm looking into your eyes. This actually helped a lot when I used to watch YouTube videos. I would just hold the eye contact instead of having captions on and reading the screen. Of course, you shouldn't be watching too much YouTube. That's also probably one of the problems. That's probably one of the reasons why you don't have great social skills and that's why this video is really out there. To be honest, what I'd suggest is just to get out there more, to do more, talk to more people, try new things, just do interesting things, do things that excite you. Uh, this is a completely different YouTuber, but I don't know if you've heard of Kelly Ocasta, his saying, do what excites. Literally just get out there, do something interesting, talk to people along the way, and you'll really enjoy it. So I'd suggest joining like a sports team at your school, some sort of club. Sports team was a great way that I was able to make friends and I was able to get to know more people. So I'd suggest that, I'd highly suggest that actually. So anyways, back to the point. So for the part one action plan, if I can get there. So part one action plan. So the first thing I want you to do is to focus on one specific area to build your confidence in. Of course, you should try to be improving all aspects of your life. You should be doing some kind of mindfulness practice learning all the time, staying healthy and active, but you gotta really focus in on one specific point to build your confidence. What I recommend is just getting in the gym, building some muscle, but never skip on your cardio or anything like that. Make sure you're staying healthy and active always. Of course, you'll lose a bit of gains from doing cardio, but I mean, it's the cost of your heart, it's the cost of your health. So what I recommend is just get in there, start building muscle, get on a routine and stay consistent. If you can really build this up, your confidence will skyrocket like crazy. You'll pretty much be a whole new person after this. And once you have that inner confidence, knowing that you've worked on yourself and that you've improved yourself in these ways, your social skills will increase significantly because you have belief in yourself, you have self-esteem, you know that you're you for you. You're not trying to be someone else. You're not trying to impress other people all the time. The, re the really, like, in re to be honest, the only person you really want to be trying to impress is yourself. 
If you're always constantly impressing yourself with new PRs, new achievements, new goals that you've reached, just knowing that you're also on an upward trajectory, you'll have so much more confidence, you'll have so much better social skills because you have so much less neediness. Next thing is to realize that everyone's equal. You gotta really form that belief in your mind. Even though some people seem like they're way up here, way up here, whatever, they've just put in more time, they've put in more consistency, they've put in more work, or maybe they haven't, maybe they've just started up there. But at the end of the day, we're all human. Nothing's unachievable really for you if you see someone has insane social skills and you think, oh, I'll never get there because they've been like that for years. If you just work up to it slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly over years, like personally for me, it's been years of just taking really slow improvements, just really getting a bit uncomfortable and then, you know, having like relapses, having um, low points, whatever, having flat points, but just little, little improvements. And it's always, on, as long as you're always on an upwards trend, you'll really just find that at the end of the day, everyone's equal, no one's superior. So what's the point in seeing yourself as someone who's worse than everyone, someone that can't speak to someone, someone that has lower confidence, anything like that. It's important to just speak from an equal plane and not be really nervous and fake when talking to people. The third thing to do is, this is a given, but to speak more to more people. So this means just really getting out there joining, like I mentioned earlier, some clubs, some sports, because you'll be forced to talk to these people. You'll be forced to have some kind of camaraderie with them, which is amazing. And this will really greatly improve your social skills. What I suggest is just really getting out there, speaking to people in your classes, trying to make more friends, speaking to people around you if there's some kind of class or something you're doing, and there's people around you, just asking them what they did, Really just be, be comfortable talking to people and just getting yourself out there. Like if you're at a park and there's people doing something interesting, you could just go up to them, speak to them, anything. What I recommend doing also is just, if you can, when you walk down the street, really work on this. Hold eye contact with people, give them a smile, give them a little wave, say hi, good morning, how are you? And it'll oftentimes lead into conversations, especially have like a dog, you can ask them about the breed. And then for me personally, this always ends up in some longer conversations with the people, with the owners. And some of these I've gotten really crazy value out of. Like I spoke to this one guy who had what sounds like a really successful business. He told me that communication is the key to really any success in life. Anything you do, communication is key. So that's why I'm really talking about it and I'm trying to improve my own as well as with this channel, I'm able to speak in a way that I can try to improve my words over time and articulation. He told me that taking action is the only thing that leads to any kind of success, not procrastination, of course. This is a little off topic, but that's what you can get from speaking to more people. The last part of this action plan is to, in, in the terms of your body language, this is gonna sound really weird and you're gonna, I'm gonna get chewed out for this. But I highly recommend doing this. I think it's honestly the best thing you can do for your body language. If you have that poor and like really just nervous, weak body language, it's to watch, analyze, and literally copy confident people's body language. So in my classes, there used to be this one guy I'd watch, he had really confident body language, just sitting there, stuff like that. And because of the fact that I'm always just analyzing people, I'm always seeing what they're doing. I was able to just literally copy, try and copy what he was doing for his body language. This is gonna sound really just like sad and whatever, but it worked. You know the saying, fake it till you make it with confidence, confident body language. This is pretty much like an extra step, like a step above a boost of it because you're already copying something that's pretty much proven if they're really confident or like if it's a movie character or something, but it's honestly better if it's someone in real life that you see just really see what's making their body language look so confident, look so dominant, look so whatever you want to look like. And just co literally copy it, try it out, see how it feels. It'll feel uncomfortable and like you're faking it because you are. But after a while, it'll be comfortable and it'll become a part of you. And the reason, okay, so to explain why this is so strong, in my opinion, and why it works so well, is because humans over time have learned from copying. When you're a baby, you learn from copying your parents. 
In this case, you're just learning from copying other people's body language. And it's very, very, very effective. I haven't, I haven't heard anyone else talk about this, but this is one thing, one key thing that really helped my body language. So copy other people's body language. The next part of the video, part two, is a lack of respect and an overly inflated ego. So part 2.1 is being a bad listener. And this is really making you unlikable. So everyone knows something that you don't know. Everyone has some kind of value that you don't have. Everyone has unique experiences that you don't have. So it's really important to be able to hear them out, understand that they have their own perspective. You're not the best person in the world. The world doesn't revolve around you. Everyone has something you can learn from. So listen, it makes people feel really appreciated and just really, it feels like they have something good to say. They have something valuable for you to hear. And it probably is if you're listening and they're teaching you about something, something you didn't know. Hearing about their unique experiences can allow you to learn a lot about how other people see the world and how this can change your own own perspective on the world, how you can improve in aspects because you've seen them implementing certain habits or whatever. Just really be able to listen. I suggest just speaking less than you listen. This is one thing I generally do. I'm more of a listener than a speaker. I prefer in conversations, listening to what people have to say. If you can speak less and you can listen, the other person will have had a really good conversation with you because of the fact that they are able to talk about themselves, which people love to do. Last way to be a better listener is to be present. So I suggest doing some mindfulness like meditation specifically. If you can f just really focus on what they're saying, be present in the moment, be with them, have strong eye contact, really show that you're listening nod yep mm -hmm. ask questions related to the topic just continue the conversation if you can be there with them it'll make you feel like so much of a better listener they'll feel so appreciated so listened to you'll seem like an amazing conversationalist and you'll be someone that they want to talk to more the second thing is entitlement and ego so a lot of people tend to just look down on people which in my opinion is really negative in terms of your social skills and charisma. Because if you're always looking down on people and just seeing them as less than you and that they can't bring any kind of value, that they're worthless pretty much. To be honest, you're probably just a not a bad like you're probably just a bad person. But the reason why is because it just makes people feel like they're not accounted for, it makes them feel like they're not heard, they're not seen, it makes them just feel really bad about themselves. And They'll associate this specific emotion with you. So when they see you, they'll feel some kind of negative emotion. You're just really putting them down and they're feeling really bad. The second thing to do with entitlement and ego is ex always expecting other people to do things for you. This is a really bad thing to like rely on. If you always think that someone's going to pick up your mess, other people are going to do things for you to like help you out or whatever. At the end of the day, you're there with yourself. Of course, people are going to help you along the way, but you can't expect this out of people. You can't expect people to do things for you just because you know them, just because you're whatever. You're not special. You really should just focus on yourself. Just get rid of this ego. Focus up and just be a good person. Be yourself. Clean up after your messes. Take responsibility. You really want to be able to take responsibility for your actions and mistakes and be able to admit when you're wrong because that's a huge problem. If you're not able to admit when you're wrong and you're always pushing blame onto other people or trying to justify what happened or trying to push the blame of something that happened that was your fault, of course, on some sort of external circumstance, you're gonna seem really unlikable because you can't own up to your mistakes. You're not a reliable person and you just bring a negative vibe because you can't admit when you're wrong. You can't learn and grow from your mistakes. So the part two action plan, the camera's gonna die in a sec, so I'm trying to wrap it up quickly, is the first thing is to practice mindfulness. So in this case, I'm talking about meditation. So you can really be just be there in the conversation with the other person, not distracted by something else, not having really poor attention span and focus. The next thing is to appreciate people for the uniqueness. Life is honestly a beautiful thing. Everyone has differences, everyone has something different about them that you can learn. So it's important to find what this is, really just listen closely, take in everything they're saying, and use that to help yourself. Learn, grow, develop, 
all of that. The last thing in the action plan is to take 100% resp responsibility for your actions. So in this case, it means if you do bad on a test, regardless of it was your fault or not, it doesn't matter whose fault it was, just take everything you can as your fault completely. For the next one, let's say your teacher, I don't know, didn't teach you some certain thing. Now you know. So study it harder, study different subjects, study different parts of your tests. Just really try to give yourself the best chance you can. Take action on your own mistakes, on your own faults, even if they're not your faults, something that's negatively impacted you. Take responsibility for it and make sure it doesn't happen. So that was, I had to wrap it up quickly. One last thing I have to say before this ends is always remember this for any kind of social action, any kind of confidence thing. This is my kind of quote now. And it's to be yourself unapologetically. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what else you want in the comments. Yeah, I mean, I'll see you next time. Let me know if you like these lower, well, not quality, but like less edited videos. Because to be honest, I'm not really a big editing guy. And I want to work on my speech without editing and having to rely off cuts and everything like that. I want to be able to influence more with just my voice, just my own tone. I'm pretty much... I'm not speaking from notes, like of course I have the bullet points, but that's about it. I'm trying to speak just from my own knowledge and from my own kind of improv skill. So yeah, let me know how the last two videos were. Just really get out there, be yourself, unapologetically of course, do more things. And yeah, in no time they'll be a lot more likable. If you can implement all of these, take the action steps to heart, just really get out there learn to love yourself, learn to appreciate other people, and you're good to go. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.